Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is material? The value step node. Let's jump right into our example. First of all, this one's going to be possibly a little bit confusing to understand. This is one of those nodes where you really have to play with it so you can see the desired effect based on what you might want to achieve. So our value step node. If we type in value step or just value properly, we'll find it under the miscellaneous section or it's technically under the gradient section because it's meant to create a gradient or it's meant to be used with gradients. Now it can be used with normal textures and I'll show you how that works as well. Our value step has a few inputs. It has the mask offset value, which is a scalar default to negative one, number before white result, which is another scalar defaulting to two, and then a gradient input. Now I don't have the gradient input plugged in right now because we're gonna wanna go ahead and see how this works first of all. So for our example, is a couple things. First of all, this one's really important. This is a if we look under here, we have expressions and functions. When we click on expressions, this is important to note. These are things that are basically your inputs or your pure abilities inside of your material. Functions are basically those pure things put together to make something else. It's an actual function just like in code. And it's important to know because our value step in case you're trying to figure out what it does behind the scenes, you can double click on it and you can actually pull out the function behind the scenes. And you'll find this is handy when you're confused at what is going on. So keep that in mind. Now I say that because, let's go back in here. If we have nothing plugged in, it goes ahead and it uses a gradient, a, ra a linear gradient set up vertically for the default input. And that's important to note because when I start changing some values here, you're gonna notice this changes, which it changes because we already have a gradient behind the scenes plugged in. So what I mean by that? Number before white result is going to be our primary number. This is our primary input that we're gonna to wanna to change and that's going to affect our result. The mask offset value is basically something you should leave alone is what I've, I've determined you should leave it alone to be honest. By default, if we look here, we're technically seeing three things. We are seeing a band from zero to one, one to two, and two to three. Now I bring that up because the number before white here is two. What this is saying as plugged in like this is two is the number we want before we start showing our white result. So anything before two, our zero to one band and our one to two band will be black. And then our two to three band, two to three band is going to be white. Now, if I adjust this to one, it's going to change and we're going to see a band in the middle. That's important to know. Remember I said this is broken up into three different bands. Let me go and actually show you that. If I do zero, you're gonna see nothing. If I show one, we're gonna see our first band lit up. And then when we go back to two, we're gonna see our second or third band technically lit up. We go back to one, and I'll explain how this is working. We have number before white set to one. Zero to one is set to black. Now we hit our number before white parameter. This says one. So our one to two is going to be white. And then our two to three is going to be black. Now the first confusing part on this is it's number before white. Why is everything after this number, our one to two and our two to three, for example, not white? Well, if we step through here, we'll notice a few things. The ceiling node, is our important part. This basically rounds up the numbers. That's why our one value gives us a result. And if we type in, for example, a 
nothing's going to show up because our ceiling value rounds to the closest to the highest integer so 0 1 2 only integer values will return results with this node the second part the reason why the other steps isn't showing after this is after it seals it throws it into an if and our if is basically only going to fire white if it is that exact number anything greater than or less than is going to come back as black so basically what this node does is give you one output value based on your input range our input range in this example is going to be a vertical gradient converted into three different steps and then output based on our value we set in our number before white. So this is slightly confusing, but hopefully when we go through the other examples here, when I force certain multiple values, it'll make it more clear. So let's go ahead and plug in another linear gradient. And actually, you know what, for example, we're going to go ahead and plug this in as, there we go, we're going to go ahead and set this up as a vertical, so you can see it in the example before, and we'll go ahead and set this to 2, which is our default value. So before we had three ranges, 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 5 and we saw one band in the middle. Now I've gone ahead and taken that gradient that we used in the previous example and multiplied it by five. So now we have five. Let's actually make it 10. We're gonna now have 10 for our value. We now have 10 bands in here, zero to one, one to two, two to three. And then technically we have zero to one, one to two, two to three. And then we have zero to one, one to two, and two to three again. That's why we're seeing this band being shown again multiple times. That's because of our offset value and our number before white. If we were to change our number before white to something like 3, now we have 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. We hit our 3, and we have 3 to 4. And then it's going to repeat 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and it's going to repeat. And it's going to continue on like that. It's because of us plugging in our linear gradient. Now, linear gradients kind of don't work right for this example. Well, I should rephrase that. If you use a gradient, a linear gradient, for example, or a spherical gradient, this is what's going to end up happening. If we were to change this to 1, for example, we're actually going to get something like this, where we get a repeating parameter because of the way value step is set up and our fractional settings here and our divide and all these input numbers, blah, 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 all this stuff here. The way it's set up is basically it's going to split apart your gradient into these ranges. If we were to plug in a texture sample, and this is where it becomes fun, we're actually going to get something a lot different. Now our texture sample is this little, let's overdrive into here it's going to be this little clouded smoke effect if you notice there's some darker areas which are going to be closer to zero and some lighter areas which are closer to one when we multiply our darkers are going to get larger but our whiter are going to now get overdriven and they're going to be over one now i say over one because that's important these this node only works with values that are greater than one if you put in something that is not greater than 1, it's not going to work. So that is something to keep in mind. So we have here 0 for our value with this texture sample plugged in. And of course, we're going to get nothing as our result. When we plug in 1 for our value, we let it compile. Now anything above 1 in that 1 to 2 range is going to get shown on our mask. So our darker values will be removed, and then our, zero, our 1 to 2 values will be shown. But something to keep in mind is our 2 to 3 values, our next range, is not going to be shown as well. By that, I mean if I show you 2 here, we're going to see the small little part here. And if we were to go back to here, keep in mind this is our point. 
this is going to be black right here because it doesn't fall between our 1 to 2 range. If we were to multiply this, let's say by 10 again, now we're going to get a much different drastic result. Even though this looks solid white, keep in mind our values are going to be between 0 and 10 in this case, which means our number before white, if we put in 5, is going to actually give us a result. If we go to something more like an 8, you may know something familiar. Oh, 8's too high. Let's go with 7. We're going to get that little spot back. You also notice, you may have noticed, there was another little spot here, which we can't see. Because now that we've multiplied multiple times, it actually falls in over here. We'll go to 5. This one's hard to show with the slider because of the fact that it has to be an even number. But you'll notice as I go through all the different values, we end up different, getting different ranges. I'll go back to 3. And you notice we slowly get to break apart this image into the different ranges. Now, the nice thing about this is you could technically use this something as a height map or a way to differentiate based on the height, honestly. That's something I would use this for. With your dark values being your lower and your white values being your higher, you could use something like the value step to determine where your highest values are. Maybe you want your smallest, you know, your 1, 2, and 3 to be something like rock, and then your 4, 5, and 6 to contain maybe a grass, and your 7, 8, 9 to maybe be a, well actually you would want 1, 2, 3 rock, maybe 4, 5 to be like a mud, 6, 7, 8 to be more like a grass, and then 9 and 10 could be snow. So you could break apart this into different sections and use it for material layering. That's an example. We could even pump this all the way up to 100, and now we have a hundred different steps. And you'll notice, of course, you get much more noise because we have many, many more samples we can pull out of each of our different steps. Because it's going to break this into a hundred different steps rather than ten. And you can get some pretty interesting results out of here. Keep in mind, though, when you multiply something like this, the reason why I did 70, like for example, if I did 80 and nothing came out, we have nothing in our original source image that was close to 80% solid white, which means multiplying, we're not really going to get anything above 70 in terms of our value. So that's something to keep in mind if you're not getting results. I was able to get solid values with this because we're going from 0 to 1 on our original gradient, but our original texture sample here definitely does not contain anything above 80% for the white value. You'll also notice something really cool is our little sphere or smear here you know we set it to 70 and we're now getting a much more defined but of course the more steps you have the less data you'll get on your higher ranges like this we're just kind of getting the outlines of things one thing you could do which i found was fun for this now that we have all these different values you could actually use something like a time node or a sign node drive in values use seal kind of like we used in here to give you full values there's your positive values and then you can animate the steps between each of these did i leave that in here no i didn't um, i wonder if i can do that let's see if we can do that really quickly let's see what happens let's go with time this might oh, let's go with something let's go with something like 10. we'll drive a time node from 0 to 10 seconds And we want that to be our multiply right here. So we multiply here, we go like that. And after that, we need, should we do, let's, let's seal out our time node itself. I'm trying to figure out which one I should seal out, probably the time node, that we would get steps of zero to 10. That would be smarter. And this should give us a value between 0 and 10 plugged into our multiply. And this should go into our gradient. See, this is why when I play around with stuff, things stop working. Well, let's see what happens if we do this. Ooh, look at that. Okay. 
So it's kind of hard to see on here. There we go. But you have, we do have a little bit of motion as it's slowly going up for our value on our multiplication. Oh, I know. Oh, that was really, really silly of me. Okay, so our 0 to 10 is only going to give us back part of it. We actually want, yeah, see, we, we, we can multiply this by the value here. But it's our number before white. Okay, yeah. So we're, I'm an idiot here. Okay, so let's cut this out. This one's supposed to go here. This is supposed to be by 10 to give us the value. And then our number before white is what we want driven by this. There we go. See? That's what I meant to do. So you'll see it go from our solid zero value here once it resets. And then slowly adds up to all of our different values. 0, 1, 2, 3. And you see all your different ranges. We want this more like an 8. Remember we talked about that. We couldn't go quite to our full 10. See? And over 8 seconds, it's basically slowly going to fade away. And you could have this maybe as a, a shield effect, maybe a particle shield. You hit the shield, and then obviously you'd want to have a better time period here. Maybe multiply it, do some time adjustment. But imagine this being a shield. It's colored. You've got some... Oh, screw it. Why not? We've got a result here. Let's turn this sucker. This is always... Let's screw around with stuff. Translucent. Slap this into our opacity mask. Let it compile. You can even color this like a little blue color. I wonder what happens. To that. Why not? Why not? This is fun. Multiply. We want our emissive color to be this one multiplied by. Uh, let's go with something like a blue. Okay, let's see what happens here. Once, of course, it compiles. There we go. So we have kind of like this little blue effect. Now imagine wrapping this around a sphere or something like that. As things start to hit, you have this. Obviously, this is a bad noise pattern, but, you know, speed this up a little bit. You kind of have this little effect where something can hit it, and then you can have a shield falling off. So that is going to wrap up the video. Hopefully you found some good uses for the value step node. Like I said, it could be a little complicated. This is one where you really want to play with it based on what you're trying to result. It's useful for masks. That is the intent of it. One thing you'll notice is it is kind of a little bit solid. That is the intention of the value step. It's not going to give you back a gradient. Remember, we're using integers. We're using solid numbers. And it's going to give you back something that's very useful as a mask.